This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by GoToMeeting. Jerry Ellsworth is a self-taught computer hardware engineer and is very well known for her work in the video gaming field. Uh, she's working on a new VR project now called Cast AR, and we have her right here in the studio to tell us all about it. Welcome to San Francisco. Hi, Veronica. You must be really excited. Your Kickstarter launched today. I know, and uh, in the last six hours, we're already about a third of the way to our funding goal. I, have, is... I have a hunch that you're probably going to reach it. Just a little bit of a hunch. Knock on wood. I think so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so give us a rundown on what you're working on. Okay, so what we're doing is projected AR. That's our primary mode of operation. So we have a pair of glasses. They project out from two micro projectors on the top out to a special surface, which is a retroreflector. And what a retroreflector does is the images that hit the surface come directly back to the same user. So each person that's around the surface can be getting their own unique stereoscopic display. So if we're rendering graphics like a teapot on the table, then I'd be seeing like the handle and you'd be seeing the spout of it because we're seeing from different perspectives. Gotcha. So um, I was fortunate enough to get to try these out at Maker Faire uh, in the beginning of the summer. Um, what has changed with the product since then? Anything? So the earlier um, prototypes were very heavy. Um, they were definitely prototype stage. So we've worked on miniaturizing the electronics. So we've gone from about eight microchips to do all of the work and then heavy aluminum frames and stuff down to plastic frames like this. We miniaturize the electronics yeah. so that it's um, two chips now, and when we go into production, we'll get it down to a single chip that does all of the driving the displays and does the head tracking and position tracking. Now, what I notice too is that I have this issue where I always get motion sick when I do anything related to 3D or you know mm -hmm. even when I wear something like the Oculus Rift. Um, am I going to get sick wearing these? I is that going to be a problem? No. Um, the reason that you don't get ill with our system is because the, um, the tracker is very good and when you move your head one millimeter, your inner ear senses a one millimeter um, movement where other systems give you, present you the wrong information displayed. So it's like being on a boat that's rocking back and forth because the image isn't right and your inner ear isn't right. Uh, another reason that this is more comfortable is the retroreflective surface. So we're projecting out to a surface and the images are out at a natural distance instead of a display that's really close to your eyes that might be stressful and cause you to go wall-eyed or cross-eyed mm -hmm. because the alignment's not right. Um, so folks that get headaches um, because of this focus issue don't have that issue with ours. That's, that's a good thing to be able to say. You won't get violently ill using our product. <laughs> yeah. Actually, no one's complained, so it's great. We've ran thousands of people through our product at Maker Faire. We went to about six different conferences and just keep running tons of people through it and show them that this is real and it, uh, it uh, works as advertised. Nice. So, so far, so good. Yes. <laughs> I think we're going to be all right. So how long have you and your team been working on this project? So it started at Valve Software, which is a software company in Bellevue, mm -hmm. Washington. And uh, so it got its origin there. And then we pulled it out of the company kind of forcefully. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so we've taken it out on our own, and so for the last eight months, we've been continuing to refine the design, make it lighter, integrate it more, miniaturize it, um, make the tracking better. Mm -hmm. it, what do you think? What do you think is the biggest the biggest hurdle you've overcome so far working on this? I think the tracking was the biggest hurdle. Um, when we originally started, we used webcams on the glasses, and we used paper fiducials, like these little QR codes that you put down, mm -hmm. and those only worked at a 45 degree angle or straight on. The lights had to be perfect in the room. We developed our own tracking system that uses modulated IR LEDs that are embedded into the surface. And you can go two degrees off of the surface and um, anywhere 360 degrees around the table in any light condition, unless it's too bright. Yeah, we yeah. were testing that out with the studio lights earlier. And yeah, they, it's a little bit too bright. Uh, there might be an issue there. They'll, they'll blow anything out. Yeah. I imagine you're probably familiar with the Z-Space technology. Oh, yeah. um, so that's being used in a lot of different arenas. Do you see your project as being something that can be used outside of just the gaming realm? Oh, absolutely. So we've been working with a shark researcher. Um, he collects tons of GPS data off of sharks that they tag, and they have a very difficult time um, analyzing this 3D data, so all the paths the sharks go and the depths that they di dive. And so he's writing a specific app for our glasses so him and his colleagues can stand around one of these surfaces that's rolled out and they can see their own perspective of the data and they can use the wand to zoom in and out and click on different tracks and analyze the data. Oh, wow. Um, we've been talking to some folks that do big flight simulators. So normally these big flight simulators project 
uh, images towards the windows and it's very costly to have all these projectors. Now you can put this retroreflective material in the windows and then each of the pilots that are in the simulator just wear the glasses and they project the proper scene. They can even project the instrumentation if oh, there was wow. a little piece of retroreflector there. Yeah, that's amazing. I can actually kind of visualize how that would work uh, based on just what I've done with the demo, um, you know, playing with the, the Jenga blocks. <laughs> I'm like, wow, looking around, you can actually, you feel like you're in a 3D environment and it's, it's very immersive. So anywhere the material is becomes a display. So if you want a giant display, you hang this on the wall, you make a giant display. So it becomes this huge um, 3D stereoscopic display wherever you look. You just have to have enough of these infrared LEDs so the glasses know where you're looking at all this times. This is the holodeck. It is. You, you could turn this into the holodeck. This is the holodeck. This is how it starts. So as I mentioned, there's a Kickstarter that just launched uh, at the beginning of this week. Yeah. Now, what do people get if they donate to the Kickstarter? What are some of your big rewards? So the, the obvious goal is you can get the glasses. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the entry point. We have the surface and the glasses, and then you can use your own input devices like Xbox controllers. And um, next level up, we have the uh, wand included with the surface and the glasses and our VR clip-on, which converts the glasses from um, projected AR to classic VR, near okay. to eye display um, type VR. And then above that, we have our Pro Gamer Pack. Um, is that what it's called? Something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's the board, board Game Pack. Board, board Game, game pack. pack. Okay. Um, but it comes with an RFID grid that goes underneath the surface, and then you can use RFIDs on the bottom of your figurines, and you can place the figurines down, and since it's a grid of RFID reader coils, we can p find the position of your miniatures and render graphics around them. So you put a character down, see all the stats, or put a dragon down, he'll shoot in virtual fire. That is awesome. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. Do you have any personal favorite examples of how VR or AR is being used like right now, like the Nintendo 3DS, for example, or Oculus Rift? Uh, I think the best experience I ever had was virtual reality welding. So it was a full helmet that you put on. It had some virtual reality goggles built into it. And my background, I welded in the past building race cars. And I ran through this thing. Um, it had a, a little wand that vibrated like it was welding. And I <laughs> did this weld. And then I flipped the hood up like I would normally welding to look at my weld and it wasn't there. It completely convinced me. Wow. But out of the stuff that we're doing, um, I find the two-player, three-player experience is pretty cool. We have a game where you lead your characters through with the wand um, through a maze and there's zombies chasing after you. But it turns into this kind of interesting game of looking at the other player and trying to anticipate their move. So you see them move their wand and you know they're up to something. Um, you might be in different parts of the world, so you're partly watching the other people playing, and then you're also trying to, you know, dodge zombies or lead them over into the other person's um, zone. Nice. So it's collaborative and also competitive yeah. at the same time. The social ways. aspect is really, really cool because with the glasses, since they're not covering your vision entirely, mm -hmm. you can just look across and, and see the other person. Do you feel like this is something that's going to replace console gaming in the future? Do you feel like this is the future of gaming? I don't think it'll replace consoles. I mean, some people just want to sit back on the couch and just not move at all. This is a little bit different, so it's going to be very social or maybe very immersive. Um, so I think it goes along with uh, console gaming. Uh, maybe someday it'll hook up to the consoles and this will just be something that you roll out when you want to have this really awesome um, Next board level game. peripheral kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us here thank in the you. studio, Jerry. And where can people follow the project online? So it's Cast AR on Kickstarter, and uh, Technical Illusions is our website. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I can't wait to, to play with it more going forward. Thanks. All right, we've got more Texel still to come. But before we do that, it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Building a strong relationship with your team is key for any business. You need to meet and collaborate with coworkers and clients on a regular basis to brainstorm, develop quality ideas and solutions, and to just work better. Communications is critical, but getting everybody in the same room is impossible and often expensive if you're scattered around the country. That's why we use GoToMeeting with HD Faces. It's a powerful, simple way to meet online from anywhere at any time. With GoToMeeting by Citrix, you can share screens. It makes it easy for your team to be on the same page, invested in the conversation. 
conversation. Turn on your webcam, make your meeting a video conference, plus you can launch or join a meeting from anywhere using your computer, your mobile, or your tablet. It's so easy, you can even present from your iPad. What could be simpler, people? GoToMeeting is great. Share how your team uses GoToMeeting to get work done from the office, at home, or on the go with GoToMeeting mobile apps. And we like GoToMeeting so much, and they like you so much, we've got a deal for you. Try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code TECHZILLA. That's GoToMeeting.com, promo code TECHZILLA. Meeting is believing, and supporting GoToMeeting.com by using the promo code TECHZILLA is bringing this show to you.